Clint Adams here and I'm at my house. Um, we are just doing a GPS mark out uh, using the GPS that we use for water pro irrigation systems. Uh, not the most conventional way of measuring up a backyard for a residential irrigation system, but that's what we're choosing to do because I have the tooling available. Uh, so this will be the, I guess, the start of our lawn installation and irrigation installation here at my place. And uh, due to COVID-19, I don't have a videographer with me at the moment because um, we're trying to keep socially distanced as much as possible. So this is going to be very raw um, and it will be uh, recorded predominantly on my phone and the screen's blurry and shit and hopefully the sound's good. Um, but yeah, so Matt's just measuring up the area. We're going to do a flow test so that we know how much water we've got in litres per minute. And then Matt's going to take that back to the shop and do a design. Now, if you were doing an irrigation design for your own property, you don't need to use a GPS tool. You can just use a measuring tape and a piece of paper and send it in to quotes at waterpro.com.au and they can do the design for you. But obviously we've got the tools that we're doing the tools. So what you'll see next is the process of Matt doing the GPS takeoff, getting the design done. Then we'll send the materials here and then I'll actually do some hard work so my wife might have to hold the camera so you can see me actually digging some trenches. Yeah. So what I've got here is most of the stuff that we're going to need to put in before the lawn goes down. The lawn's getting delivered tomorrow, so we've got three inch bodies. Uh, usually we recommend three inch bodies where possible, four inches if you if you want to go that way. Uh, the lawn I'm putting in is going to be a tiff tough, which will be mowed quite short, so three inch bodies are uh, deep enough, or shallow enough, tall enough. Uh, and then we've just got a bunch of inch fittings and a manifold over there. So Matt, who designed the system, designed it with inch poly. Uh, I would have gone with 19 mil because I don't think about fluid dynamics, he does. Uh, I think the system, one of the lines is 24 litres a minute, so he's chosen to go with one inch poly as a safety. Uh, we're gonna use copper clamps. Here's one we prepared earlier. Uh, probably not overly necessary considering the fittings that we stock here are made in South Australia and they're good quality, but again, I've got my own irrigation shop, so I'm gonna take what I can. Um, so yeah, we're gonna load this in the car and head down to my house and start trenching. So we've dug some of the trenches um, because we have two three-year-olds and a six-year-old here wanting to help us. What we're going to do is put the sprinklers and some of the poly in the areas that we have available to us now and then we're going to get the kids to backfill the trenches which should keep them occupied for a period of time. Uh, me being me, I didn't grab the side out of the elbows that we need so we don't have them here. Uh, but Brandon is kind enough to come and deliver them on his way home and we're gonna make him do some trenching while he's here because he's young and fit. I've already got a headache. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get some pipe in the ground and the kids are gonna backfill it so that we can keep them occupied because it is quarter to five and for those of you that have children and are aware of the witching hour, we're about to have that. So we're gonna get moving. So we've just got up to where the concrete pad's been done for the, the shed and most people wouldn't worry about this, but me and Matt aren't most people. So we've chipped away the cement, I'll just show you there. So if you have a look down here, shit. That cement there is um, gonna stop our sprinkler from getting right in that corner. Now, that's not a massive issue, but you know, we're gonna do it, do it right. So we've just chipped all that away so that we can get the sprinkler right down there. So this method here ensures the pipe rolls out nice and smooth. Um, you basically reverse, uncoil, well you're uncoiling it from how it was coiled on when it went uh, from the machine. So if you look at the ground you're holding onto that Jack man. So Jack's got that end of it and it's nice and tight and Matt's uh, unreeling it. So we're gonna get this in the ground and then the kids can backfill all the sand because they're keen to do that. What is that one? What do they say? Never work with uh, kids or animals? <laughs> I don't know. 
I'm an animal. I said I'm All right, let go of that a bit. Jack, let it come up this way. I said I'm down. We just want to get that Dad. up against that. Dad. Make sure it's nice and tight on the Dad. thread. I think the kids Dad. did that before, so Dad. Um, yeah. obviously tight. Hang on, Connor. I think that's a tight. Oh shit. Not nah, tight, but not over tight. Um. Yeah. I know. So, what we've done here is we've dug the ah. where the sprinkler's going is dug down quite deep, but the, the pipe doesn't have to be as deep as the sprinkler. Um, what are we aiming for, Maddie? About 10 or 12 mil under the grade? Yeah, just under that seal. So that's good. And then just pack that in. Obviously, that sprinkler's going to pop up 75 mil. Yeah, and we're going to be cutting this turf with a cylinder mower, so. It's very unlikely that we're going to have any issues there. Um, I don't want to have to raise them up. We're just putting all the loam in. So can you go back? Yes. Yeah. That's right. In fact, you can pack all the soil around here. You okay. want to make sure that sprinkler's nice and straight. Can you be careful with that, mate? Yeah. No, not yet. We need that later, though. Oh, okay. That's okay. And we want to leave it so that there's like that much gap. And you can fill the rest of this trench in now. Yeah? If the pipe's in there. Yeah. How good's that? You stand on it kind of like this? Yeah? So, I've just built this, which is two spanklers next to each other. It's going to go down uh, behind me. We'll show you on the plan. I'll get uh, Michael to cut that in. The reason we've done this is because there's a really skinny area behind me between the pole and the fence and then it opens right up so on one part we're going to have a really big sprinkler doing a quarter and on the other part we're going to have a, a side strip uh, R van and that's going to spray about a metre and a half forward by about four and a half metres to the left on that side and then to the right on this side. Um, so I've made that, we're going to put another T in that which we'll cut across. It's It looks a bit weird but it's not a big deal because once it's in the ground, you won't notice it. It'll just be a small uh, black sprinkler head in the ground. Um, and then we'll be watering in the morning, so you're not gonna notice. Plus it's what, like those, um, you know, when you kind of paint your house and then you get some paint on the wall. That's my daughter. Um, you notice all those small things when you're doing it, but at the end of the day, you won't notice it when you've got a beautiful lawn. So this is Lucy digging trenches. Connor, what do you got in your hand? An apple. So I'm going to cut a piece of pipe now, uh, which is going to be a T that's going to join onto the edge of this, and that's going to cut across. So uh, the idea about pre-building this above the ground is that I can work at a, at a bench basically, which is the edge of my pool, uh, and make it nice and like tight and it's all ready to go, and then we can just stick it in the ground. So um, I'm going to do that now. Built. Oh, there it is. Cobra clamp, well, ready to go. Yeah. So. <laughs> Probably should put that back on the right way. So we um, we don't know the final height of the of the lawn area because we haven't got to that point. So what I've done now is I've just run a string line. You'll see, actually I'll just show you the string line. The idea is that the string line um, will let us set the sprinkler height that we need uh, without us having to get the lawn level right. So have a look at this. So I've just run a string line from... So I'll just run a string line from there across to the other side and then we're going to have a sprinkler in here and so we'll just set it just below that sprinkler height so uh, that'll be just, I reckon if we go 15 mil below that uh, that'll give us 5 mil to finish turf so we can mow over that sprinkler without damaging it. Alright so um, Ask Ervo down here in his high vis because he's safe is cutting in the little TTT contraption that I made. So you see how easily those cutters just slice through that, like butter. Hey Maddie, they shouldn't call them cutters, they should call them butters. <laughs> yeah, like Jeff and Jeff again? Or? <laughs> Come on Randy, socially distance yourself. Um, I'm on the shovel. So yeah, uh, because I've clipped up all those other ones, it makes Matt's job real easy now. Yeah. Anyway, we got a tail for that side. That's really. what's going in there. Um, and then, what do you need a T? A threaded T for that over there, or what do you, is that where you were going to put a slide out of that T? 
Okay. Were you going to put a side outlet tee over there? No, the tail was in a bit of pipe. Yeah. I was going to get you the fittings. All right. Just tell me what to do. I'm, it's my first day. That. A tail. <laughs> a tail with pipe. My hands still smell like that, That's the tail. See the blue one? That's the tail. Okay. Let's go get some. That's good, though. So I've got the guys working. Brandon's digging trenches and Matt's installing irrigation. It didn't take me long to uh, stop doing any work, but these guys are the professionals. Um, so you get that on the big job. <laughs> when you're when you're the big dog. You get that on the big job. <laughs> on the big jobs, someone's got a point while the other ones shoot. You know. Wait, give him a fucking <laughs> my pick back. <laughs> anyway, we're about to have a sight war. Lucky I hadn't left my shovel over there. Otherwise, we'd call a new Fatung. <laughs> so just talk us through what you're doing now, Matt. I'm cutting the sprinkler in for the side strips. Because you're about 1.5 metres through. So that sprinkler is three meters from the one left and right of it? Correct, yeah, we've got another one, 3.2 that way, 3.2 this way. And, and that's... the same on this side, because what you throw out, you have to cut them that, yeah. And 3.2 is a lot closer than we'd usually put a... They're up, they can go out to 4.5. 4.4, 4.5. But 4 that's yeah. cool for us. And we can tune them down a little bit, because there are vents. You can turn them down a little bit, yeah. Yeah, but then it's going to take the 1.5 as well. Correct. Yeah, so we don't want to do that. Oh, then again, what did you get across there? 1.7? So we want to leave them open. Yeah, overthrow to the left and right. <laughs> Fuck me. If I do another take without pressing the fucking record button, I'm going to smash my head into a wall. Hi. We're just building another one of these. I talked about that before. This is the weirdest irrigation system. Um, professionally designed by Ervo. Um, so I'm just clamping all this up. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep the clamps on the back of the... Uh, on the barb. I don't know if that's a massive issue or not, but I do it. Uh, you'll probably be wondering why I'm looking to the right of the lens. I'm actually watching myself on the on the screen that's on the right of the camera. I haven't done a lot of vlogging uh, with this camera, so it's a bit weird. But I've made another one of these for Ervo to stick in the ground. Um, when you see the overall design at the end of it, you'll understand, actually. Um, I'll just walk you through it now. So... Here, there's a lawn area there, and that's, I guess, rectangular. I think there's six sprinklers in that, which is ridiculous. And then it gets skinnier here, so it's 1.7 meters across here. So you'll see there's a sprinkler there, and then we've got two next to each other there. Now, the one on the right is gonna spray back. So the one on the right is gonna spray back in that area, because it's quite skinny. And the one now on the right, <laughs> <laughs> the one on the right now is going to open right up and shoot right across to the other side and right out there. So um, once it's finished and we show you how it all works together, you'll, it'll make a lot more sense. Um, these two are talking about how exciting it is to play on cubby houses, I think. This is, I'm like, I don't think I'm paying these guys at the moment, so I can't get too much in their face, but I think they're probably just going to have a break and have lunch in the cubby house. Whew. I haven't done any work for a while and I'm not sure if you've heard this from me before but my grandfather um, my step grandfather he used to tell me that he thought manual labor was a Spanish guy for a, about 20 years until they explained to him that it's not Emmanuel labor this is my son Jack uh, we can't show you his face because he's six Jack's gonna be a youtuber when he's older aren't you mate so You'll see him driving around in what colour Lambo are you going to get? Maybe lime green. Lime green. I think most people, if they're going to get a Lambo, lime green's probably in the top three colours. So stay tuned for Red Ninja Jack 13. Ninja Ervo, <laughs> fuck my foot. Um, Ervo's just doing the last elbow on this line. So that fitting that he's putting in now is an E10G12M. Um, he looks like he's a bit frustrated, like the pipe might be a bit long, but... No, we dig deeper. We dig deeper. That was the way you did. 
the only one I did. We can't see Dick, but look at the quality of the, the picture. <laughs> yeah. Like it looks like it's still light out here. I can tell you, it isn't. Um, so what have we got left to do over there? Currently 4:30 a.m. <laughs> Me and Brandon need to get to the shop to open soon. He's full of shit. That's not that bad. <laughs> so we're gonna do another. We're gonna do a tea join down here to cut across the pool. So we're just gonna make that now. I'm gonna get Jack to make this one. Yeah. Um, just to show you how easily it can be done. So. What we need to do is find the cutters. Uh, tip for those of you at home, uh, get a little plastic container with a handle, and put all your cutters and your clips and your tools and your fittings in that and just take it with you wherever you go. Um, most professionals would do that. I'm not a professional. So what we need to do is join that T, which is gonna go over there to that T there. So that's what he's doing. So you hold that. So we want to measure the amount of pipe that's needed for there, which is about that, to make it as short as possible. We get the cutters. I want to do this bit because this is a parent's job. And then I'll give that piece to you. So you're going to push that piece onto there. So you can put that one down. So you really want to get your hand, one hand behind there, and one, and then that one there, and like walk it on like that. that does that hurt? Okay. So I'll do it for you. So you're holding that like that, and you're pushing it on like that, right? And then you do the same with that one. Might be easier to do that one. That's it, and just walk it on like that. That's it. Push, push, push. Is that hurting? <laughs> well, you keep, you see if you can get it in there. Alright, we just do that, right? Oh, we're gonna put the clips on there first. You can do that a bit for me. So get that, slide them onto there. Yep, one, two, three, one before, so like, two. Right, so then we slide those chips back. Whoop, yep, that's it. So that cobra tool, you want to grab that bit there, that's it, and that bit there, watch out for daddy's fingers. And close that. Uh -uh, that one a bit further back, that's it there. Grab that bit there. And pull that really tight. Squeeze it as tight as you can. Keep going, keep going. Hang on, wait for daddy, wait for daddy. Alright, so I'm going to help you with it. I'll grab it. Yeah. Right. You just grab those bits and squeeze them. That's it. Squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. That's it, I think you got it. I think you got it. Oh, nearly, no. Again, go. Hang on, let me have a look at it. No, you did get it. Good work. Yeah. You wanna do it again? Oh, yeah. And that one you there. Yeah, you had me hurt the other night, babe. I've been on the pick for <laughs> Right, squeeze that. So I've been doing it every squeeze it, squeeze it, for the last it. six months on my, my phone. Oh, you got it. All right, good work, dude. And that's it. Show everyone on the camera what you've got there. So that, you're gonna, you want to be able to see it there. So that's his uh, Jack's first irrigation fitting. They can't see your face. So you don't have to smile. <laughs> All right, let's get that down to Matt because we're running out of light. And then Matt's going to cut this in. Irvo, you want to cut this in? Yeah. Who's talking? To see your uh, shiny teeth. <laughs> <laughs> it is getting a bit dark. I might <laughs> see if we can turn that light on. Good morning. Uh, today is Good Friday. It is 7 a.m. Uh, it's also my son's seventh birthday today, Jack's birthday. So I figure what what better to do on a day off from work, and I haven't had a day off for a while, is to lay some lawn. So we've got 168 square meters of tiff tuff on pallets in the front yard here. I'll get you some video of that in a sec. Um, and that tiff tuff is going down today, hopefully. We haven't finished the irrigation system yet, so um, who knows how that's gonna go. Plus, um, it's Jack's birthday, so I don't wanna spend the whole day laying lawn. Because we need to celebrate that. Um, it's been hard enough for the kids um, that are having birthdays now to not be able to have birthday parties with their friends. Um, so we're gonna make it as special as we can by celebrating at home and hopefully he'll have some lawn to run around on. So we've got four pallets of Tiff Tuff here. The lawn is not going down until the irrigation system is in. Um, so that's how the Tiff comes. So it comes on pallets. This is from the turf farm. So I chose Tiff Tuff uh, for my backyard because 
the people, uh, sorry, I chose Tiftoff. I chose Tiftoff for the backyard because we've got a display of Tiftoff at Railways and the Tiftoff that we've got at Railways is standing head and shoulders above the rest of the lawns at the moment and we don't look after them. So it gives us a good idea of what a lawn's going to look like with no water um, and, and no love. So I ordered an extra 10 square metres. Uh, we did a GPS plot of the area, so I'm going to guess that... No, I'm not going to guess. The area is pretty much 158 square metres. Uh, but I guess having the luxury of owning my own landscape supplies yard and getting a good deal on some turf, I bought an extra 10 square metres. So uh, it'll mean we, if we need to, we can, I guess, throw away the cuts. So uh, I'll show you the tools uh, that we've got for the day. Um, and then we'll get going. So the other night we did the irrigation, or part of the irrigation install. The At the moment in South Australia we've got daylight savings, so the sun goes down at about 6.30 or thereabouts. So we've got all the trenches done thanks to Brandon coming here and just doing an hour of trenching. Uh, hopefully Matt and I can get the, the remainder of the irrigation in quite quickly this morning. Our main focus is just to get the the sprinklers in the ground so that we can get the lawn down. Uh, we're going to put the manifold over there, uh, but that can all get done later. Getting the lawn down is really important uh, so we get the most out of the, um, the sun that we're expecting. So in Adelaide at the moment, uh, we're getting temperatures along the, um, you know, 21s and 20s. I really miss having my videographers around. So in Adelaide at the moment, the temperatures are around that 20, 21. We've got some 24 degrees in about five days. So I'm thinking if we can get the lawn down now, um, it's gonna get the most best possible chance uh, to get the most sun. Uh, I don't know, I guess I know a little bit about a lot. Um, what I do know is that if it's not warm, grass doesn't grow. So I've heard 16 degrees Celsius, and I guess comment below if you think that's that's right or, or wrong. I'd love to know what people, uh, what ground temperatures people are, I guess, getting turf growth at. Uh, but Tiff Tough is meant to be able to grow well in low temperatures and uh, not as much water requirement. It's actually just recently been awarded a watermark, approve, which is, a watermark approval, which is really um, the first time I've ever seen that on a lawn. So we'll catch some stuff today for you, hopefully do some time lapse and, um, and show you how we put lawn down. Uh, really important to keep in mind that this is just how we're laying our lawn. Um, it's how we're doing irrigation. There's, I guess, best practice and there's a good way to do things, but everyone does things differently. So we might screed differently to other people. Um, we might roll differently to other people. Um, we might irrigate differently to other people. This is just the way we do it. Um, and if you have a different way of doing things, then comment below. I'd love to know, um, you know, obviously in the Western seaboard, Western Australia and along that way, uh, they use articulated risers for their sprinklers. Um, in South Australia, we don't. We just put them straight on fittings. Uh, I'm not concerned about having to raise these sprinklers up at any point. And if, well, I can't raise them up. They're, they're at a garden edge. So if anything, we're going to be taking the, the lawn down if um, if we need to. Now, the landscape company, um, Outscapes, who have done my prep for me, or they've put all the loam in, they've got it to a certain level. Uh, when they install their turf, they install it lower than grade, than the steel grade. Matt and I want to get it to grade because I'm going to be mowing it with a cylinder mower. I want to use that as, a, as I guess, a, uh, a guide or a, or a path. Uh, I also was worried about the kids potentially falling on some metal corners. So we're going to lay the lawn at grade now and it's probably going to be top dressed uh, potentially in September or October to bring it up to that. We'll see how we go with loam today. I can't get any more in now, even though I have access to three trucks. I can't drive a truck because I don't have a truck license. So, yeah, anyway, I better go. My little princess is calling me. Happy birthday to you. You bit. Hooray! You bit. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> so, uh, we've only got one battery in the, this camera, so I'm going to probably not be recording as much as I was originally. I've got Jackman here, my main man. He's seven today, and he is out here helping us backfill trenches. And we got Ask Ervo over here doing the last of the irrigation. So, um, what time? I think it's like 7.30 or 7.40 now. We're gonna lose time really quickly, so I'm not gonna record heaps because we've gotta get moving. Uh, as you can see now, Matt's measuring the distance between these sprinklers. This is a really small area. 
Um, and most people, if they came into the shop and had a design done, they probably wouldn't put as many sprinklers in as we have. We've done it properly from a design standpoint. There's just gonna be sprinklers everywhere. So we've got about, I don't know, 30 meters of irrigation left to go. Um, we've done it about an hour today, so we're running out of time, uh, just after eight. We only really wanted to work till 12. You wanna be on YouTube? This is my snotty nosed three year old called Connor. <laughs> it wants to be on YouTube. So we're gonna put the valves where I'm standing now, which is here. So that's why we've got that pipe coming underneath there. So we've got three valves for the lawn, because we've used R vans. We probably could have done it with two on MP rotators. Uh, and if you're interested as to why I'm using R vans, I wanted to keep the rain the system completely rainbird. Um, Rainbird give a five year extended warranty on systems if it's completely Rainbird, so, you know, warranty's important. Um, so yeah, the valves are gonna go in the middle of this garden bed, and then that means we should be able to hide them uh, from, from the view. We, once they're in, we shouldn't need to get to them again, um, but if we do need to get to them, we wanna be able to get to them pretty easily. Uh, yeah, as I said before, I'm trying to save the battery, so that is the update for now. Ask Ervo is down to the last two sprinklers. I just want to show you what we're doing with this backfilling. So, the trenches that we've dug, well when I say we, I don't really dig too many, but um, we're just backfilling it with the existing soil. Uh, there's no need to backfill that with any washed sand or anything. Uh, obviously, they're not deep enough that they're going to avoid a, a core necessarily, uh, but if we do core this lawn, uh, we'll, we'll know where they are. Uh, the only one that's obviously going to be of concern is this middle one here. So once we've got that sorted, we're going to get these uh, this massive lawn level put together, and the, the lawn roller, and we've got a fertilizer spreader there to get out some got laid. If you're uh, installing a new lawn, even Tiff Tough, they actually say the turf farm says that Tiff Tough doesn't need um, doesn't need any, well, as many nutrients. Uh, I'm still gonna put a start of fertilizer down because I think it's a plant and it still needs fertilizer. And then we're gonna spray some roots and shoots on it uh, once it gets a bit of life into it. And I think between some got laid and some roots and shoots, BBW, we're gonna give that, uh, that lawn the very best start. <sighs> um, this probably would be easier without three children running around in the backyard, but um, Jack's done a wonderful job. All right, it's 9.30, so I think we've probably an extra two hours today that we've spent on the irrigation uh, and babysitting some children. The, um, so the sprinklers are in and all the pipes are underneath so we can set up to the main line later. Uh, all I need to do now, or all I need to do, all Matt needs to do, is level off that lawn. So we've got this lawn leveler that we've borrowed from uh, Mitch from Sand and Stone was kind enough to lend that to us. Uh, I think he made it actually, he knows someone that made it. So Matt's just gonna level off that, that turf area and then we're gonna start cutting in some lawn. So just trying to get down as much of that lawn as we can before lunchtime. Because as I said earlier, it's Jack's birthday today. Okay, so now that the irrigation's in, we're just um, leveling off the area that we're gonna put the lawn down. Now, Matt used a rake, uh, like a plastic rake, to scrape up all of the rocks. Obviously we've done some irrigation trenching, so we've picked up some rocks. So this rake here, was very handy to get all these piles of hard dirt. I mean, if you could be bothered, you could probably break them up. So there's a wheelbarrow here full of those. And now we're just throwing out some organic loam from the garden, that's Jeffrey's special soil. We probably could have brought some more loam in um, or some more soil in to get this done, but in usual Clint fashion, I'm just trying to get it down. So uh, I think the initial result for this lawn will be good, but not great. Um, I just wanted to get it down. I just found out that we've got some 28 degree de days coming up next week. So if we can get this lawn down and get some water on it and some food with some sun like that, it's really gonna give it a good chance to get started. So as you can see, Maddie's just scattering out some of the organic loam. It's not gonna hurt it, uh, but it's just gonna be much easier to spread around. And uh, and we start carding in the Tiff Tough, which weighs about 20 kilos a roll from what I could feel. So I think I'm gonna get my wife to do that. So we're going to fertilize and put a, did you bring a wetting agent? Yep. yep. So we've got BBW and got laid here. Uh, we're going to get them down underneath the sod before we put the sod down. 
ultimately it doesn't matter if you don't get it down and you want to put it down afterwards, but as Matt was just saying, the phosphorus is there for root zone health and root growth, so there's no point putting it on top if we've got an opportunity to put it underneath. So I'm going to try and break off, I guess, 50 square metres of our tub, which our tub does 200 square metres, so I'm going to try and get out a quarter of that tub, get it into the fertiliser spreader and get some kind of calibration going on for how much that needs to be once Matt's got that level sorted out. And we'll start wheelbarrowing turf in, which is the, um, I guess, the bit that makes everyone happy, but it's going to be hard. So it would have been nice if some people came and helped, but Matt's here. So the got laid comes in a five kilo tub. Uh, five kilos covers 200 square metres. I'm going to take a quarter of this out to try and do 50 square metres and see how we go. Uh, I'm going to use this spreader. You can use any spreader. You could use your hand and throw it out if you wanted to. And the idea behind got laid is that it's a fertiliser designed to encourage root growth early in, I guess, a lawn's life, which is now. Uh, the turf farm suggests that you don't need fertiliser for a tiff tuff. I'm going to stick it down anyway, as I said before, because I think that it's a plant and fertiliser can't hurt it. So, uh, there's no great way to do that. Let me hold it. Alright, so. Let me hold it. That's about a third. No, I'm going to hold the first one mm. and then I'll get you to do that. That's probably a third of a tub, so we've got to be careful with that. Mm. And we're just going to throw it out here. Are you going to come and help me, mate? Yes, sir. You've got to stand behind me, though. Why? Right. So that area there that I've just done, I've got my finger on the full full trigger. I've probably Let used a third of what now. I put in, and then Let what? Me do it now. Hang on a sec, buddy. What's there? Like 20 square meters there? 30 square meters? Yeah, probably 30 squares. So, yeah. Hang on, stand back, buddy. Stand back, quick. Watch out, I'm coming. Watch out, watch out. And that's what's left in there. So I don't know, that was 50 squares probably. It's probably not enough down. Let me do it now. Yeah, hold that. Okay. Squeeze the trigger here and turn that handle. Yep. Yeah. Good boy. All right, that's enough. Thank you. So I've got some BBW in here. BBW is a granular wetting agent. Uh, Lawn Hub's wet is the liquid version of this. Identical products, just one's a liquid, one's a solid. I'm just gonna get some wetting agent down. <laughs> I've got Lucy standing next to me blowing up a balloon. Obviously we're leading into uh, autumn and then into winter, so a wetting agent probably isn't something people are traditionally thinking about putting down at the moment. I'm gonna get it down because, well, I get it for free. Um, but it's not gonna hurt to have a wetting agent in the soil to help that water spread out evenly through the soil profile. Thankfully, my backyard slopes downwards, so I'm getting four square meters to the, to the barra. Barra? To the barra? Is it barra? Is there like a trade name for wheelbarrow? Barra? I'm definitely not a tradesperson. Um, so four square meters to the wheelbarrow and I'm just rolling it down the hill. So uh, I'm gonna try and work out how to set up a bit of a time lapse with my phone and see if we can time lapse this. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately in South Australia now, the whole, I guess, operations of business has changed so much. We, like Michael, who's our videographer, would have been here. If I had staff working all this week, I could have just been at home and documenting heaps of this. Um, I'm working on um, the theory of don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good, which is one of my personal values. So we're gonna make a good video, and it won't be perfect, but it will give you an idea about what we're doing, and I'll try and give you as many tips and insights as we can. Biggest tip so far, get Matt to do most of the work. We've put down a first, the first few rolls of Tiff Tough now. Uh, if you can have a look down there uh, <laughs> at my stomach. Uh, it's in really good condition. So it's April here in South Australia, which means we're leading in, well, we're in the first month of autumn. Um, and I'm really surprised by the condition that it's in. It's really heavy. So it's, um, it's a pretty decent clay. I don't know, it's like a clay kind of base, isn't it? Like it's a heavy loam. A heavy loam. Um, and it's kind of moist. So it's obviously been watered and then cut. Uh, no complaints though, it looks really good. Um, we're gonna water it in really well and, and roll it and level it off as much as we can. So, um, 
yeah, what's that? Eight square meters down, 150 to go. Probably should stop making videos and start laying some fucking lawn, hey? <laughs> Alright, so I've had a three hour break for Jack's birthday. I think that's pretty much my three hours of family time for the month. Uh, and we're back into it. So Matt's just got back, he actually got to go home and spend some time with his family as well. He's a nice guy, this Matt guy. Um, so what we're doing now is we're going to try and connect up uh, some garden hose. We've got a ball valve in the garden. All the blue line's not connected to the ball valve yet and it's rehouse so we can't mess with it because you need to be a plumber. But we can hook a garden hose up to some poly pipe and then hook the poly pipe up to, um, we've got some fittings here, obviously. We've got a lot of irrigation fittings in the backyard. And we're gonna try and get some of the sprinklers going so we can start watering this lawn in. Uh, the, the ground that we've laid this on, my house is basically built on like an, I don't know, dinosaur burial ground or some shit. Like it's just, it's basically like a brown cement. So we're gonna try and soak the ground a bit, give this lawn the best possible chance to survive and also probably, hopefully, soften up that soil enough that we can run a roller over it and get the, the sods to, to balance out a bit. It's not perfect, uh, but I wasn't looking for perfect, I was just looking for done. So um, I think Matt's just done. <laughs> Matt's just connected it up, let's see what happens. So Matt's going to send some water through those lines now, hopefully. I mean, there's a lot of lot of hose for it to get through. But you'll start to see some sprinklers pop up soon. Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Middle, Middle one. Where I'm, a bit, I'm going to get wet. Oh, here's one. There's one. There's the first one. So those orange nozzles that are on top of the uh, sprinklers are a flushing nozzle. Do you know what? how many litres per minute they flush? Because no. I reckon there's a, it's a thing. Like, it allows out a, a certain amount. So I've actually never seen this happen before, but that's a flushing nozzle. So once Matt's flushed that, we've got all the dirt out of the line. It was, we shouldn't have dirt in the line. What's that? Yeah, it's underneath some lawn, I think. Yeah, it's under the lawn. Ah, yep. So once we flush them, uh, we can grab those uh, nozzles. So if you have a look here, this is a low point, so this is always going to dump water. As you can see, it slopes up, or slopes down to here. So all the water in the system is going to drain out of here at the end of the watering cycle. So it might be worth us putting a check seal in there. I don't think we can on a three inch though, can we? We can't retro. Four inch only. Yeah, so one of the great things about uh, Hunter three inch pop-ups is you can retrofit a check seal to them, which will stop the water draining out the bottom. So if you see there, I've got that little ring. I pull that up. I can then hold that black shaft and take the orange flushing nozzle off and then put my R-band on there and we can get watering so Matt's just cutting around this uh, sprinkler there which has just been exposed and I'm going to grab some R-band nozzles and we're going to start watering because we're irrigation junkies and we just want to see it happening not exactly the most uh, conventional way of doing it but as the water pro value fuck normal goes oh here he goes he's flushing again so we've got that one there a bit of dirty water came out of that one actually, Matty. So that's flushing there, that's flushing there. And that one's flushing there, and that one's flushing there. So those four sprinklers will be able to get some R-bands on. And hopefully they'll pop up. <laughs> and if they don't pop up, we'll do a video on uh, why not to irrigate through a garden hose. So we're going to get uh, the first nozzle in. So Matt's just pulling up the... The Rainbird uh, 1803, which is a three inch body that pops up. It's a 15 mil 
female thread at the base and he's retro not retro fitting he's fitting a an arvan maroon or red which is their biggest thrower yes. uh, 17 to 24 feet everything's in feet with these uh nozzles because they're a u.s company so the shaft of that sprinkler mac, mac can grab and, and turn it you'll be able to hear it so that noise is not a bad noise that's fine and he's trying to get that white line that you can see on the left pointing in line with here down the left edge yeah. so uh then once we he's done that that's it um the rest of the adjustment can be done when the sprinkler's on so it'll pop up what does it come up as default 180 provided they haven't been messed with, with yeah. so these came straight out of, out of an unopened bag so we'll see if there's any mess going on now obviously i talked before about that uh check or the check seal there see how much uh, water's gone into that hole so there's a lot of water around that sprinkler we unfortunately rainbow don't have a three inch as far as we know that'll stop that from happening so as much as i've tried to run uh rainbird for the whole system we might have to retrofit a uh, hunter body down there if i have problems with water leaking it should be all right once the system is being used properly um it's just draining down into the garden bed so that's two nozzles matt's done in a minute 30 uh and obviously he's not trying to race but it's just highlighting how easy this is to do once the uh, sprinklers are in in the right spots also for people to change out nozzles if they haven't got ones that are suitable yeah as well but they can easily change out sprays so if that if that was a a hunter PSU and you had some flow issues you could take the nozzle off and just put a Arvan or an MP rotator on there. Correct. Too far. What are you trying to get down the le oh, the left hand side? Yep. That's why I hold the camera. <laughs> one more to go and then it's party time. Three sixty. Oh, Clint. Did I buy one? I didn't buy anything. Did, you steal one? Did I steal one? I hope so. I think so. I think so. I don't know if I grabbed anything from railways while I was. I'm so shit. <laughs> what? Did you just tip all the maroons out? Yeah. Yeah, that's a 360. It's just one of the old ones. Oh, that's right. I was putting a smaller throw in there. <sighs> Getting in my face. To getting in my face. <laughs> Did you bring one home? You also said you were so shit. I am pretty shit. <laughs> it's amazing to think how far I've come with no talent. My mum told me when I was younger that if um, you're not sure what you're talking about, just sound confident and most people will believe you. So right. She'll hate me for saying that because that's not her, I think. Um, all right. So I'm not going to stand in the middle. I'm going to stand on the side. <laughs> See some Arvan magic. Should have a soundtrack for this. If these don't pop up, that's because I didn't do a pressure versus flow Ervo test. Again, yeah, that's true. Ervo with his left hand, right hand. Okay, that's not too bad. So that middle one's fine. Matt's getting wet, which is great. Sorry, the camera went flat. We don't have a gimbal, so uh, this is probably the bumpiest, shittiest footage. That looks pretty good. So the one Matt's adjusting now, he's just adjusting it by hand. So all you need to do with the R-Vans is push down on the the head and turn it. So I don't know if you can see that. See how that, he brings that arc out and then he's just looking to see that it's running down that line. Now the idea is that we were trying to get head to head coverage. So there's a sprinkler down here as well. I'll put my hand out. I don't know if you can see that water falling. See the water falling there. So that's landing on me now. Yep, so that's good. Matt's got that spraying back into the garden, which isn't a massive issue. Well, we'd rather that. I might just grab, move Connor's gumboots, otherwise tomorrow is not gonna be a good day for Connor. Yeah, you'd rather it spraying into the garden than... So we've got one spraying in the wrong way. I oh, know, that was meant to do that, wasn't it? You just need to open this one up. Look how much water's coming out of the. Um, like look how much water's coming out of the nozzle as well. Yeah. It seems like they were defaulting at um, uh, 90 degrees, not 100. That's our tape measure. Probably not meant to be wet. Ah, fuck. <laughs> I'm just going to put this one directed. Yeah. Rather than. Yeah. So, there you go. So, we can run that. 
Um, I think we might need to try and find another snap-on because I think the O-ring on that one was busted, so that might be why that's doing that. There you go, so we've got those sprinklers. We're just going to run them for an hour uh, and just get all of Connor's toys off the lawn. Uh, run that for an hour and try and soak that lawn in. The thing is... Yeah, that's right. And look, this the whole thing's been about it not being perfect, but just being good. Uh, obviously, it, the, probably something that comes to mind is that anyone that's not, I guess, a professional, and I call Matt a professional because he has done this as, a, as for a living, um, can expect this kind of result. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, we've rushed this, we've worked in the dark, we're both working seven days a week at the moment, we're just trying to squeeze it in. Um, we've got head to head, that's important. The lawn isn't perfectly level, but that's going to change. We'll get that. Um, anyway, you'll see. So this area here has been watered for, I don't know, an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's where I stood. Um, you'll also notice I'm wearing sneens. Fuck off, it's a public holiday and I'll do what I want. <laughs> Asics, colourful sneens. So there's, there's a bit of water there. Look at this one. Oh, squelch, squelch. Oh shit. <laughs> That's got some weight in it. Oh no. So the idea was that we'd get the water roller onto there after soaking it and it would just level off. Uh, the whole day Matt's just been like, I had a roll out, I had a roll out, I had a roll out. Um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to roll out 120 kilos on like one 14 year, size 14 shoe deep in where there was a trench, but yeah. she'll be right. So today's Saturday, the day after the laying of the lawn. I'll just show you what it looks like. Um, we laid the last lot of the lawn in the dark <laughs> and it got so dark that we didn't end up end up laying all of the lawn so i'll give you a bit of a pan so you can see what lawn laid at my house looks like day we'll call this day two i don't think the phone gives the most ideal color idea the, the lawn actually looks much better <laughs> ignore that the lawn looks much better um in real life than it does on camera, I think. Today I've got to go to work, and so does Matt, um, or our day jobs. So we intend to get back here. This is that area that I was saying, there, look at that. That's, that needs a roll. So if we can get the roller onto that, um, that's gonna smooth out a bit more. Um, that sprinkler's sitting quite high. That's not how we want it to look long term. Uh, but as I said, the plan was to get the lawn down, give the kids something to run around on for for now, and then uh, we will top dress it out. Some of the areas are fine, and once I get a mower on it, and I'll get a good idea of how it all looks. So yeah, that's my tiff tough day one, day two. At the moment, we're just running the irrigation through a garden hose. Uh, that'll get changed to an irrigation box there when we get some time. We also need to cut in those edges and we missed this bit here but that's fine we've got i think 10 rolls left and we've got some off cuts so we measured this lawn using a gps and we have basically well, but not basically we've got exactly the amount of rolls left that we over ordered so we ordered 10 spare rolls and we have 10 spare rolls So there's a lot of sprinklers on this line, 
which might seem a bit weird, but all the sprinklers on this line are using very low amounts of water. So at the moment the lines are filling up with water, as per all the other stations. I've left the flushing nozzles on. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if there's enough water to get these up because it doesn't look like it's doing very well. It's almost like there's a blockage somewhere. Which could be a kink in this hose. It's not very best practice to be using a garden hose like this um, to irrigate with. I can't see why it's not working. So well, I might just switch all the nozzles out. I've got my observant sprinkler party here. So I might just um, put the nozzles on and hope that they're clean enough. It's really weird. Can anyone see where there's a kink? Doesn't look like it. So I thought this might be worth showing you. The um, the head on the side strips have a um, where they sit kind of indicator. If you can see that, so that all that circle is this here, right? So we're trying to water this rectangle here. So we want the water to go. Where's this? We want the water to go from there out and from there that way. So this here is completely saturated. And I was a bit worried that there might have been a leak, but it looks like it's just because of where the flushing was coming out of. So if you have a look, it's hard to do this with one hand, all of this here. I think that's just it flushing. It's a bit shit. But yeah. I just kind of just pulled that up to see because I stood on that and it just went everywhere. But I think that's just the way they're flushing. So it's going to be interesting. I'm going to just have to get all the nozzles on and see how we go. All right, so all the sprinklers are in on that final station. Um, I don't remember whether or not they meant to point to the left or point to the right. There's a white line on the body and I've just had that on the left-hand side. So this is either going to look really good or it's going to go and point the wrong way. Lucy, there's a little orange lid there. Do you want to put that in the bin for me? Lloyd, you might want to move, mate. We're about to turn some sprinklers on. This is Lloyd. We're about to move Lloyd. Look at that dribble, Lloyd. Um, I'm going to turn the sprinklers on. Can you move? Yeah, moving. I bet he moves when the sprinklers turn on. All right, so the last line has too much flow requirement or pressure requirement to pop up off of a garden hose. So we lost that battle. Um, I'm just going to disconnect the, the hose setup and See if I can run it from inch to inch, uh, otherwise we just have to wait till we get the irrigation system in, which is a pain in the ass. Because I can't really go out today, but yeah. Lucky I've got keys to an irrigation shop, hey? Alright, so, ball valve, inch poly, all the way down into the line. And then up to here. Now the sun's just come out, which is nice. So hopefully we can get some irrigation on here before this lawn dries out. Um, I'll try and set up the camera somewhere to see. I really should have a tripod for this shit. <sighs> Missy Duffy. Um, Lucy, do you want to turn the Connor? Do you want to turn the water on? Do you remember how to turn the water on? Lucy, it's okay. Connor's doing it. You show you show Lucy how to do it. Lucy can turn it off. That's it. You got it. Crank it. That's it. All the way. All the way. All the way. That's it. That's all the way. Cross your fingers. You can hear it. Oh, I think it's going to come up. Watch where you're standing. Come on. Lucy! Turn it on, please. Is it on? Can you go, make, no, turn it on properly, please, Connor. Go turn it on. Thanks, Connor. Watch this. Is Daddy going to get wet? No. You reckon? Watch it. 
Stand back. Oh, Daddy's not gonna get wet. Oh no, Daddy's getting wet. Ah! 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 All right, so I did have some of them pointing the wrong way. I'm going to quickly try and rectify this. Ah, oh, God, they are so slippery. Connor! Connor! Connor, turn the ball valve off. Turn the water off. I'm getting saturated. Well, there's, that one's in the right spot, so it is to the left. That's to the left. That's to the left. That's to the left. So what was wrong? Maybe. Thanks, mate. I now got to watch the video and remember which ones are the wrong way. Um, oh, now my thong's all wet. Oh, at least there's lawn out here now. All right, so some of them are facing the wrong way, Connie. No, no we're not getting wet because you got wet yesterday. But what we can do is you can help me get the lawn sprinklers working, and then we can play tennis. Yeah. All right. Cool. Don't turn it back on yet. I've got to try and straighten some of the sprinklers up. They're facing the wrong way, Connor. All right, so uh, that's the sprinklers. So as I said before, there's a lot of sprinklers on one line here. But they're all doing their thing. They're all dancing down there. Uh, and hopefully not wetting anything that's important to anyone. I don't think there's anything in there that's important to anyone. So I'm going to leave these on for about an hour. Get some water into that lawn and then I'm going to roll it. All right, so it's been a couple of hours. Actually, I don't know if it's been a couple of hours. It's probably been an hour. That's probably a bit heavy for you, Lucy. Let me do it. Let me do it. Um, I've got YouTube inside parenting the boys. So I've got my assistant here. Where is she? <laughs> Lucy, she's going to pull the roller. I don't think she's going to pull the roller. So I'm going to give it a roll and see how it goes. I'll see if I can film it. So, uh, we just had a, a cycle of water on here. I think I've gone a bit too crazy. Like, there's some, like, I just disappear into some of these areas. Uh, that's where there was a trench. So, and if you have a look down here, like, it's squelching. Like, um, which was kind of the idea, but um, I'm worried about damaging the, the sub soil. So, if you have a look at that, that's all washed away. Because it's on a slope, all the water... What? She'll come out in a sec, dude. Hang on. So, I'm just going to get that last... I'm going to get that last line there cut off. There. And join it up to there. And then run it for a, a bit. Water the bits at the top. And then Matt's going to be passed with some irrigation, hopefully, today. He had to go past the shop to get his golf club. So, while he's there, he's going to grab some stuff. Good morning. It's now Monday. Uh, Easter Monday, so public holiday here in South Australia. We're expecting a sunny 24 degrees. Look at that. Uh, one of the things I was really worried about when we were putting this lawn down was that we weren't going to get enough sun for it to establish. And we've got some forecasted temperatures of 27 and 28 this week. Anyway, so Matt has given me a delivery. I couldn't get out of the house yesterday because I had the kids. Um, so the remaining parts that we needed to finish the irrigation Matt went and collected for me um, and before everyone comments how good is Matt he was going to the shop anyway to get his golf clubs to play socially distanced golf but he did get me some stuff and drop it off so I'll go through the box now and see what we've got all right so we've got a Rainbird WPX four station controller and three battery operated solenoid coils so you're probably wondering why I've got that. Uh, there's no power where my controller's going at the moment. So I'm gonna put in a battery operated system first. I really hope you got me some batteries. It's pretty good. Oh yeah, we got batteries. So the uh, there's all the fittings we need to get the mains water over to the solenoid valves. Obviously we've had a plumber install a ball valve. Um, so everything after that I can do. And then we've got the solenoid valves here. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that one through the garden so we don't need to do anything with that. We're gonna replace the coils on all three of the lawn valves with DC latching coils, which are these. They've got the red and uh, black wires, which are um, to help you identify the polarity because it is relevant for DC. 
and then I'm just going to get the irrigation system pulse watering uh, to keep the top dry, the, the bottom uh, all the sob soil is really wet now so I don't think we need to do too much more there and then I'm going to move around um, once I've done that and kind of fill up any really bad potholes by raising the turf and refilling it as you can probably hear my children are screaming out the window so yeah I'm going to um, fill up all those potholes like if you have a look over here where's the bad ones this is all from my body weight so like there I don't know if you can see it but yeah like that there where is it that there that's a pothole so we're going to peel them all back um, refill them with some loam because top dressing it's going to be fine but I think we're going to give it a better chance if we can get it as level as possible from the start but yeah so that ball valve there needs to connect to that blue line there so those fittings over there that Matt brought for me is going to do that uh, we're going to do a bit of a temporary setup for now because I just need it to work and then um, once the plumber comes back and does all their final stuff they can tidy it all up and make it nice and neat uh, one of the things that's really important to remember is that the guys that are doing the backyard still need mains water so I'm going to stick a ball valve in for them uh, so they can still get water when they need it. So that's the the setup. So there's water, the, the rehow, which is the, or Hepworth, or whatever the fuck the plumber's put in. Um, that grey stuff goes into the ball valve and then goes into there and then goes back down there. That ball valve there is for the landscapers to keep working. That blue line goes underground and pops up over here. So I'm just going to extend that out. I want to put the valves kind of over there so that they're back from the plants and stuff. So I've just got to join it to extend that if I need to. Then I'll put a ball valve on there so we've got live water again out the back for these two monkeys to keep playing with their sensory balls or whatever kids do these days. <sighs> so that's pretty much where I'm going to put the valve box which is in line with that corner, roughly. Uh, I'm going to dig a hole for it and make sure that I've got more than enough room. One of the big mistakes people make when they're putting in irrigation is to dig just what they need. And then if you're forever kind of battling against the sides, if you have a look at commercial projects, they'll dig a really large hole, work around, they'll get all the valve box in, then they'll cover all the holes that they've cut on the box uh, with plastic, backfill it with sand and it's all nice. So you'll find if you don't dig a big enough hole, you'll be making, I guess, decisions and you'll sacrifice I guess the line or you'll sacrifice where a piece of pipe goes because you can't be bothered digging that bigger hole so I'm going to dig that hole now for that valve box which won't be that hard because this is soft as and obviously you've got cable there that I'm trying to be careful of now this cable hasn't been protected it's best practice to be putting a um, a wire joiner over your cable so that no water gets down it uh, it's interesting to note that um, in garden lighting and irrigation people are really strict with that but the electricians that have done the work here not one of the cables has blue points over the end of it and we had some rain the other day and that blue, that cable that's hanging up there i've hung that up because it was in water so yeah also big hole in the ground all right so we've dug that trench for the the pipe i'll try and get on the right side of the sun so that's where all the pipes are going to come back down and then we've got the valve box there now once this job gets or once that valve box is where it, we want it to be or once the valves are in i want to put a base of rubble or preferably aggregate but i don't have any here uh, obviously i own the landscape <laughs> supplies yard and i don't have any rocks but that's going to give us a lot of room we're going to be able to cut down that side there on the way back out and go out there and uh, then we'll have water out here that blue line's nearly long enough but i think we're just gonna have to make it a bit longer so what i might do is build the manifold up here and have it all ready uh, nice and tight and then I can just lower it down so that gives us a lot of I guess it makes it a lot easier to build because it's above ground uh, rather than working in the ground we've got nice open space so yeah so that's the manifold I'm going to have a ball valve oh. we've got the solenoid valve for each lawn and then one for the garden now that lawn the garden one has a pressure reducer filter coming at the end of it and then these coils here are for DC so I'm going to take all these coils off and replace them with DC. I can't film that because I need to do it. So I'll build it and then I'll show you what I've done. Then we're going to put it in that hole. Now 
Now, originally the ball valve was going to be on the side, like that, and it doesn't fit in the box very well, so I'm just I'm going to turn it around like that. Um, I don't have the fittings here to do that, but I'm going to do, I don't know, I think I might just put it in for now, <coughs> just so I can start watering and then we'll take it apart and do it again later. I think that's the only way that it's going to work and give us a system today. So this lawn hasn't had any water today and it's actually quite warm. So you can see the sun, I mean, what's the time now? It's about 12.30 and the lawn's almost getting full sun. Um, that bit there's going to be quite interesting. Um, that pool edge is in shade at the moment, but the sun is sitting quite, um, like the sun's back against, I don't know if you can see it there. So the sun sits over. Um, but we are leading into winter, so we'll see how that goes. All right, so that's your manifold built. So all of these have been tightened up. Now they say they're only hand tightened, but I always use a set of multi-grips just to get them nice and tight. Uh, all of the flow controls are completely open, hopefully. Yeah, that's right, no, we're gonna go the other way, aren't we? So all the flow controls are completely open. Not a massive issue if they're not, we can always open them up later. Interesting, the coils hit the the flow controls. Uh, so we've got three DC valves, got a ball valve turned off, I've got cobra clamps on cobra clamps on all of the on all of the valves. So now that I've got the manifold built, I'm just gonna set up the uh, camera to time lapse me putting it in. What we'll be doing is cutting back all of those lines down there, down there. <laughs> Uh, and joining them in and then I'll turn the camera on point it out there and make the mains water live and we'll see whether or not I've done a good job or not because if I haven't there'll be water everywhere <laughs> all right so the battery operator controller that we're going to use to keep these things going in the short term is the rainbow WPX battery operator controller this is a four station controller the uh, there you go, that's how you hook it up for anyone. So, as you can see, the controller comes in the box, all the wires are hanging off there. So we've got red and black, as I talked about before, uh, which are related to polarity of the valves, and then that yellow uh, cable there, Jesus, that yellow cable there is for a sensor. Uh, Matt went and picked this up for me from the shop, so he's thrown some wire joiners in there for me, and some batteries, so I'll put all that together. So it takes two batteries, two nine volt batteries. We sell batteries. Fuck me. So we sell batteries at Water Pro. Stick them in. Yeah, a lot of people ask how long the. So they just get pushed in there one at a time. That looks pretty simple. And then get those cables in there without uh, catching them on this cap. And then there's just an O-ring there to stop water getting in there. I think there must be an O-ring inside the actual cap as well. Yeah, there is, well it's not even O-ring, it's just a massive rubber. So double O-ring seal, that'll keep it nice and dry. Tighten that up tight, but not over tight. So that little bit there will be able to sit on top of one of the coils. So I'm going to actually go wire this up before we get too far into it so that um, I can do it above ground like I've done with the other stuff. So that's that. Batteries are in. That's the bit that mounts. That's the bit that mounts. And then I will wire it up. And we can get to the stage where we actually put it in the ground. The moment we've been waiting for. Water. Yeah, that just doesn't sound like a bad noise. So the ball valve that I've left for the for the landscapers 
is operational. And if everything has been done properly down here, we have no leaks. So now I just need to connect up those three elbows to those three pipes and I can do a test run. I'm going to run the system for probably 15 minutes on each of the valves because I haven't watered today as I said before for various reasons. Um, yeah so that's it. It's kind of in, in line with that which is what I was looking for. It's not perfect but um, this has not been the perfect environment either. Anyway, a couple more pieces of pipe and we are done. So this is the beautiful period where you sit down and enjoy the fact that your manifold doesn't leak, and that all your sprinklers are operational, and that you haven't throttled one of your children over the October long weekend. That was a challenge. Um, it's not finished, but it's working. So um, I want to get a bag of aggregate to put in the valve box and um, here comes Connor. You might recognise his voice from earlier this weekend.